Hello, and welcome to A Critical Dragon, where I talk about narrative in film, television, and books. And this is a video about a thematic element of Dead House Gates. So spoilers for Dead House Gates. Um, specifically, it's a very short video on the concept of journey, uh, the concept of traveling, of quests that we typically find in fantasy novels, and what Erickson does with them in Dead House Gates. So if we think about the, uh, some of the different plot threads that we have in Dead House Gates, we have the Path of Hands, the, the, the Divers and the Soul Taken. We have Kalam on his revenge quest. We have Coltane and the Chain of Dogs on their journey uh, across the continent seeking sanctuary, this refugee train. We have Felicin and her journey, her travails. And we also have Icarium and Mapo. Um, on a much smaller scale, again, all about the, the journey and quest that they are on. And why I find this interesting is so many of these threads are almost a literalization of that old adage, that old idiom. It's the journey that's important, not the destination. And why I say this is if we think of each of these journeys, and if we think of how each of these journeys perhaps would have been represented in a different fantasy novel by a different fantasy author, would they have ended the same way? Because if they were in a, a different fantasy novel, I think they would have seen what Erickson does with each of these stories as a failure of the journey. So what do I mean by this? Now, obviously, I'm, I'm not talking about failure as in they weren't good. I'm not talking about failure in as in there wasn't an element of closure. What I'm talking about is typically when journeys are represented, if we think of even the old saw of, of Campbell's The Hero's Journey, this idea of going on a quest and at the end it concludes and there's a reward. So let's, let's start with the Path of Hands, the Divers and the Soul Taken. They're on this almost animalistic forced migration. Like uh, like herd animals going across the steps with the seasons or like birds migrating because of the seasons and going to where the food or the, the better weather is or other animals that go to certain areas to spawn and then leave again. That with the, the divers and the soul taken, despite the fact that they are sentient, they seem almost driven by this animalistic need, this animalistic instinct to go to the path of hands to try to take that throne, that control of that aspect to ascend. But none of them do. It doesn't result in these animals, these divers, these soul taken, these sentient beings. None of them succeed in their quest. They all fail. And, you know, that's kind of a shock. But of course, from our perspective as readers, we have been siding with the other side of that story where we are with the characters who are facing off against them and trying to prevent them from doing that. So we see that as a success on their part, but it is, it's a failure of the divers and the soul taken's journey. They fail. And then we think of, say, Coltain and the chain of dogs. Now, this isn't an animalistic need to migrate. This is a forced migration. This is a human migration, and they are being chased and harried by an opposing force. But it is a migration. It is a movement of a massive population towards, in this case, sanctuary, not power. But in this instance, although Coltain, through his actions and through the actions of the, the army and all of those soldiers, Although they save some of the refugees, ultimately their journey ends in abject failure. They don't win. They don't get to ride into town at the end of the day and be proclaimed heroes. Their sacrifice, done. It's in vain. They lost. And what I would argue here is that this failure, the fact that they didn't get the storybook ending, actually gives that journey, those sacrifices, significantly more poignancy and emotional impact than if they had just succeeded and gone at the end, oh, well, 
that was terrible. We lost some good guys, but jobs are good and we got here. Huzzah. But because they got so close and then failed, it makes it all that more heart wrenching and emphasizes the importance of the journey. It doesn't mean that their journey was meaningless. It actually gives it more meaning because they tried. And then we think of Kalam's quest. And this is, you know, something that we as fantasy readers see all of the time, a, a quest of vengeance, revenge. He's out to get revenge and vengeance for what happened to the bridge burners. He's going to take out the head of the evil empire. He, he goes through a journey across a war-torn land. He goes through a desert. He um, goes through the Imperial Warren and all of those dangers. He ends up on a ship and there's sorceress stuff going on and there's a naval battle. And then when he finally gets to the city, he has to fight his way through hordes of assassins. It's like your typical hero's journey, computer game, single player, let's go and kill everything on the way. And at the very end, he confronts Lucine in an atypical manner, but doesn't kill her. There isn't a big fight at the end. He doesn't have the boss battle at the end. He doesn't get rid of the head of the evil empire because life is a lot more complicated than that. And so from, again, from a certain perspective, his journey ends in failure. But that doesn't render his journey meaningless. That doesn't render what he went through without merit. The journey showed us so much of who he is, of it illustrated so much of who, what the empire is. It gave us insight into what's going on. And then that final confrontation from the scene gave us as readers information that made us pause and think that Lucine is not a two-dimensional villainous cardboard cutout. She's not an evil dark lord who just wants to do evil things because they're evil. The world is complicated and that journey, that experience that Kalam goes on is necessary for us as readers. And so again, that journey ends in failure, but it is, at least in my opinion, a narrative success. And when we think of Icarium and Mapo. Icarium's life, as we discover in this novel, is a series of just walking from one place to the next. It is a constant travel, a constant journey, and his memory is broken, and he is searching for meaning and memory at every step of the way. And he has this companion, Mapo. And when Icarium gets close to regaining his memory, what we would think of from Icarium's perspective as the positive resolution of his quest, of his journey, Mapo prevents it. Mapo knocks him out. Icarium's journey ends in failure. But again, us as readers, we are looking at this going, probably a good thing it ended in failure. When was the last time you read a fantasy novel where when they got to the end of the quest, you go, you know what, it probably would have been better if they'd failed. But that's what we are presented with, with Icarium and Mapo. This search, this search by an individual for meaning, for memory, for understanding, that's a very human search. And the fact that when he nearly achieves this, it's snatched away from him, he fails in this quest, but we are relieved. And I think that's a fascinating inv investigation of that very human quest, that very human journey. And then turning to Felicin and her journey. Yes, she has a, a very physical journey, you know, uh, going to the Atateral Mines, then going across the desert and, and ending up in Raraku. But if we think of what she goes on as a much more internal journey that is literalized in the physical journey that she goes on, that this is a spiritual or emotional journey, that here we're following someone who has been tried and tested and broken and injured and who, yes, 
lashes out, who treats other people badly because she is so she is suffering inside. And we have this journey that she goes on. We have this moment where suddenly she meets the um, the goddess of the whirlwind. There is this amalgamation of the two of them. And in the hands of another writer, this could very easily have been the moment of tabula rasa, a blank slate, a new start for Felicin, where all of that damage, all of those travails, all of that suffering, all of that horror that she's had to endure could have just been wiped clean, moving on, brand new character. None of that means anything. Erickson denies us that. Erickson subverts the expectation to go, no, what we go through in life is always with us. The journey is the thing, not the destination. And so while many of us might see what happens to Felicin at the end of Dead House Gates, where she meets the whirlwind, and we feel let down that she doesn't suddenly become magically healed and all of this washed away, this goes to an authenticity, a verisimilitude, an element of realism, psychological realism, about the importance of acknowledging the journey that we are all on, the life that we have, the fact that we in our present moment are a sum of all of our emotions, of all of our problems, of all of our memories, of all that we have suffered, both internally and externally, and all of the joys and celebrations. We are the sum of all of that. And if someone were to come along and wipe that away, we wouldn't be that person. And so I think what Erickson does here with all of these different journeys and the fact that they all end in some form of failure from a certain perspective is so telling of his brilliance as a writer, of the, the brilliance of this writing, that these themes, they all end in failure and yet they do not feel like failures. They actually feel like natural conclusions. They are satisfying in their endings. They create emotional responses and resonances in us as readers. And so using a very traditional motif of the quest, the journey, ending it in almost exactly the opposite way that it should be ended, but that subversion is not bald, it is not blatant, it is not poorly handled, it's not raw, it is a smooth and natural feeling conclusion to the story. So I hope you enjoyed it. Again, very short video, and I hope to see you in the next one.